On January 24, 1978, Cosmos 954, a Soviet-owned satellite with a nuclear power plant on board, collapsed in the Earth's atmosphere. Its fragments fell over northern Canada. Before you watch this video, I'm going to ask you to support my channel with a thumbs up. It won't cost you anything, but it means a lot to me and my channel. Thank you. The accident caused a major international scandal, but this was not the first and far from the last in world practice. The United States has also pulled a number of similar stunts. In addition to incidents with nuclear satellites, both superpowers in the XX century managed to conduct a series of nuclear tests in space. Nuclear Explosions in Space Some of the most significant and numerous actions that have threatened not only the environmental safety of the planet, but also the safety of the implementation of space programs are inextricably linked to attempts to develop anti-satellite weapons. The Americans were the first to take this path. On August 27, 1958, for the first time in the history of the U.S., a space nuclear explosion was carried out. A 1.7 kT nuclear charge was detonated at an altitude of 161 kilometers. The charge was delivered to this altitude by an X-17A rocket launched from the U.S. warship AVM-1 Norton Sound. It was already clear at the time that such a small nuclear charge could not pose a significant threat to satellites. It required precision targeting, which the U.S. simply did not have at the time. So the obvious solution was to increase the power of the warheads used and to launch missiles higher and higher. The record in this series of tests, which were codenamed Argus, was an explosion at an altitude of about 750 kilometers. The result achieved was the formation of narrow artificial radiation belts around our planet. Explosions in space could have continued further, but they were temporarily suspended by the moratorium on nuclear testing. True, it did not last long. The Soviet Union was the first to speak out. In order to study the effect of nuclear explosions in space on the performance of electronic equipment of anti-ballistic missile defense system, a series of nuclear tests was made. Thus, October 27, 1961 from Kapustinyar test site were conducted two launches of ballistic missiles or 12, carrying charges of 1.2 kT. These missiles exploded over the Sari Shagan test site at altitudes of 150 and 300 kilometers respectively. The response of the U.S. military in the form of the implementation of the Starfish Prime project can, without exaggeration, be referred to the actions of an elephant in a china shop. On July 9, 1962, at an altitude of about 400 kilometers, the most powerful explosion in space was conducted, the power of the used thermonuclear warhead of the Tor rocket was 1.4 metric tons. The rocket was launched from Johnson Atoll. The almost total absence of air at such a height of detonation prevented the appearance of the usual nuclear mushroom in such explosions. However, no less interesting effects were observed. Thus, on Hawaii, at a distance of 1,500 kilometers from the explosion epicenter, under the influence of a powerful electromagnetic pulse the street lighting was disrupted, about 300 street lamps were out of order, but not all of them, besides this, radios, television sets and other electronic equipment were out of order. At the same time in the sky in the test region, for over 7 minutes you could see the strongest glow. The glow was so strong that it was even recorded on film from the island of Samoa, 3,200 kilometers away from the explosion. The glow from the flash could also be seen from the territory of New Zealand, 7,000 kilometers away from the epicenter of the explosion. The powerful explosion also affected the operation of spacecraft in Earth orbit. Thus, three satellites were immediately disabled by the generated electromagnetic pulse. Charged particles, formed as a result of the explosion, were captured by the magnetosphere of our planet, as a result of which their concentration in the radiation belt of the planet increased by about two to three orders of magnitude. The impact of the resulting radiation belt caused very rapid degradation of the electronics and solar cells of seven more satellites, including Telestar 1, the first commercial telecommunications satellite. A total of one-third of all the spacecrafts that were in low Earth orbits at the time of the explosion were rendered inoperable as a result of this explosion. The radiation belt that formed as a result of the Starfish Prime project was the reason why countries had to adjust the parameters of man launches within the framework of the Voskhod and Mercury programs within two years. 
If we talk about achieving the main goal of the experiment, then this goal was more than achieved. One third of the then available satellites in low Earth orbit, both American and Soviet, were taken out of service. The result was the recognition that such an indiscriminate means of defeat could cause considerable damage to the states themselves. The explosion provoked a very high-profile political scandal, drowned out by the Cuban Missile Crisis. The result was a worldwide moratorium on nuclear explosions in space. All in all, in the period 1950-60 in the US were held nine such nuclear tests, in the Soviet Union, five tests. Reactor from the sky International scandals have been caused by nuclear tests in outer space, but also by accidents that threaten not only the environment, but also the citizens of a country that may have been in the wrong place at the wrong time. Since the early 1970s, the Soviet Union has been developing and deploying a maritime space reconnaissance and targeting system called LEGEND. This system included two groups of satellites active and passive reconnaissance. For normal functioning of active reconnaissance satellites a constant power supply of high power was required. In this regard, it was decided to install onboard nuclear power reactors on the satellites. The service life of one such satellite was estimated at 1,080 hours, which was determined by a fairly frequent correction of the satellite's position in orbit and the depletion of fuel reserves. At the same time, the onboard reactor continued its work. In order not to throw such presents to Earth, satellites were put into a so-called burial orbit at an altitude of around 1,000 kilometers. According to calculations, the satellites should stay in this orbit for about 250 years. The operation of such satellites was often accompanied by abnormal situations. In January 1978, Cosmos 954, a reconnaissance satellite equipped with an onboard reactor, malfunctioned completely and became uncontrollable. Attempts to regain control of it and put it into burial orbit led to nothing. The spacecraft began an uncontrolled descent. The satellite became known to NORAD, the North American Unified Air Defense Command. Over time information about the threat posed by the Russian killer satellite leaked to the Western press. Everyone began to speculate with horror about where exactly this gift would fall to Earth. On January 24, 1978, a Soviet reconnaissance satellite crashed over Canada and its radioactive debris fell over the sparsely populated province of Alberta. Altogether Canadians found about 100 fragments with a total weight of 65 kilograms in the form of discs, rods, tubes, and smaller parts, some with radioactivity of 200 Rentgen slash hour. Fortunately, none of the local residents were harmed, as there were practically none in the area. Despite the minor radioactive contamination found on Earth, the USSR was forced to pay monetary compensation to Canada. I thank you for watching. Your support is very important to me. Your comments and thumbs up motivate me to release new videos on interesting topics. Subscribe and turn on notifications. See you in the new videos.